Well, hello there. I thought it would be fun to show you some of my favorite art supplies from 2022. It's now early January and I've kind of had time to reflect on my favorite art supplies that I've had over the past year. And this year has been a kind of a renaissance of sorts for me to get into new types of mediums and ways of making art. And my goodness, is this going to be a great list. Let's get into it. I just have like a ton of stuff I wanted to show you and it's all pretty exciting. So here we go. I don't even know where to start. So this is not in any particular order or anything like that. It's just, just the stuff that I really love and I wanna, I wanna show you about. So the one of the reasons I'm doing this video is because I was kind of stuck in a medium or just on a few. And there was kind of this weird, like, I'm gonna be a purist of sorts of art and I'm gonna only do an oil painting. And what I realized is that uh, I don't like that. <laughs> I'd rather just use whatever is best to make the image. And so if I need to do uh, something in colored pencils, I'm gonna use that. Like, like so if I need a line that I need to get really fine, I'm gonna use a colored pencil. And if I wanna do broad strokes, I'm gonna use a big brush with acrylics. So there's certain things that certain mediums do well and that they don't do well. So I've been trying to like skip the things that don't do well and focus on what it does do well. If that makes, I don't know if that even makes sense. It makes sense in my head. We'll see. Let's start with color pencils. Color pencils are fantastic. I mean, they're super versatile. You know, especially if you're using paper, it's gonna be really, really nice to use color pencils for a lot of different reasons. Number one, you can draw. If you're a drawer, color pencils are your friend because at any moment you can just stop and be like, I'm gonna draw that area rather than trying to paint it. There are certain things that just work way better to do to use a pencil. So a lot of my early work and uh, the under, under drawing and everything, I use colored pencils. I'll use a, col a color erase colored pencils, or I'll actually use um, a pe colored pencils like this or Prismacolors, and they can you can use a lot of gradations with them, and then you can do obviously a lot of drawing. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that color pencils weren't part of my process before, but I realized that it, I didn't have a great way of implementing them. But this new system that I've worked out, color pencils, fantastic. The other thing is I'm back to painting on paper after years of kind of going around and trying different things like canvas and board. I'm actually back to painting on paper because that's where I started with watercolor. So what I want to show you here today is a painting in progress. What's cool about this is that this is paper that has been adhered to board. I don't know if you can see that very well. And so what I've done is that this is actually just matte medium that has been used to kind of basically glue it to the surface. And this is just uh, you know a panel board. And what's great about this is that the that the paper will never warp. <laughs> it's it is sealed down. I don't have to use tape, I don't have staples, I don't have to stretch it. Boom, once it's on this board, it is not going anywhere. And my goodness, is that super helpful to not have to deal with any type of warping when I'm doing a lot of washes. I loved using washes, I use a lot of water, and this is fantastic for that. All right, let's let's talk about paints. Now, as I said, uh, the acrylic paints have been this newfound joy that I've had this year, especially acrylics on paper. Um, I absolutely love it. And one of the, the paints that I have, and this is my favorite, is a Holbein's acrylic gouache. And what I think is amazing about Holbein's acrylic gouache is that it kind of has best of <laughs> both worlds. Gouache in and of itself is kind of, you can think of it as a as an opaque watercolor. So you can use it really thinly, which is how I like to paint. And then you can build it up with layers and then go all the way opaque. And you can get lovely, strong, strong, bold colors with this. And what's the most important part about it though, is that I can use color pencils on top of this. I can then draw because it's such a matte surface. I can use color pencils on top of this and kind of go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I really can't say enough great things about um, gouache. Um, I am interested to see how this next year Gouache and I are going to continue <laughs> to be friends. I'll probably need to get some more of these colors. It's really, really fun. And I would recommend that if you have not dived into acrylics ever before, you should actually start with these and see kind of where it takes you, especially if you have a watercolor background, um, as that this is going to be a familiar to you yet exciting because then suddenly you can go opaque if you need to. That's one of the issues I always had with watercolor is that I was always transparent no matter what. And this allows you the flexibility and they just won't lift. So like 
Traditional gouache, if you put too much water on top of them, they're going to lift. And because this is, has an ac acrylic polymer in it, it's going to stay when I put it down. It's not coming up. Golden fluid acrylics. What a fantastic, fantastic type of paint. I, I actually love golden fluid acrylics. And you know, when, when I had thought about using acrylics before, and I just used this you know, heavy body, even soft body paints, I never liked how they went down. And fluid acrylics have changed my mind. <laughs> um, this using this got me in the going in the journey of using acrylics. You know, just the way that this flows, it has fantastic coverage. You know, it's a tiny bottle, but a little bit goes a long ways because it's so deeply saturated and filled with color. Um, you can get a lot of coverage just on this. You know, if you've never tried a fluid acrylics, I would recommend that you give them a whirl because they have just such a marvelous quality to them. Um, and obviously you can use all the mediums I've talked about in order to get these to do what you want them to do. Fantastic paint. So Golda makes these high flow acrylic paints. Now this is typically for like airbrushing. Um, but what I'm finding is that I absolutely love them because of their fluid consistency. And uh, you don't have to thin them down, they're already ready to go. And you don't have to worry about those polymers and things, you know, kind of breaking apart um, because it already has so much medium in them. And what's great about this is that you can do large washes and large coverage with this. And, or you can actually just slowly build an image up. These are pretty new to me. I've only used them for a couple months. And my goodness, do I love high flow. And when I reach for this one, I'm looking for deep saturation, um, but also it's going to be fairly transparent for me as well. I mean, it's depending on the paint, but like this purple, this, this, this purple, this violet is just a beautiful, beautiful color when it's laid down. Um, so I'm reaching for these high flow acrylics pretty often. So these Liquidex inks, and there's a lot of other kind of acrylic inks, are kind of the first thing that I lay down now. So when I'm going for my initial washes of the background and of area, I'm using these this kind of ink. It's super thin, it's, it's like water. It's basically, think of this as watercolor, but it's permanent. Um, and there's, there's ones that are a little more, this one's a little bit more opaque, but this is now, this is the base. This is the beginning part of my painting. Almost every time is some, some form of acrylic inks. And if you haven't tried these before, I highly recommend that you give them a whirl. Um, they are super saturated and they're a little bit thinner than the uh, high flow acrylics. And so I'm using big brushes, big strokes with these guys. Great for covering a lot of ground really quickly. All right, so oil paints, of course, are a part of my process still. I use them kind of to end my painting, do a lot of glazing and gradations of colors, bring up the vibrance where I need to. And um, I don't think I'll ever get away from using oils in some form or another, but they're not the foundation of my paintings anymore. They're just kind of the ending. Gamble makes a great kind of paint. Um, I recommend you, you, you give them a try if you haven't got into oils. Their, their price point is good for what you're getting. All right, so workable fixative. This stuff, I love it and I hate it. Um, I love it because it helps in my process of my painting. Um, at certain points when I'm working with colored pencils and I want to move on to another step, whether that's additional oils, additional acrylics, or maybe even onto oils, it needs to be sealed. This stuff does a great job of keeping that stuff down so that I can um, that I can move on to the next layer. Now, what I hate about this stuff is it's so horribly toxic. You never wanna spray this in your home. I work in a cold environment. I live in a cold place, and so it's hard to use this uh, year round. I've been looking into some other options. I'll spray this exclusively outside where there's a breeze, I'm not breathing. I'll sometimes even still wear a mask outside. And you don't want to breathe the stuff you don't want it in your home, but it's such a valuable part of what I'm, I'm, I'm how I make art. So brushes have been a really important part of my journey. Um, one of the things my wife, Christina, says I'm always using too small of a brush, and she's totally right. And so this year, I really did my best to start using larger brushes. I mean, look at the size of these things. I'm covering a lot of ground <laughs> with this with this type of brush. They're very soft and you can, especially in the early stages when I'm doing um, a lot of washes, these are really, really fantastic. It's nice to have a big brush when you need it to cover a lot of ground. Kind of one of my go-to brushes is uh, is this Princeton mop brush. It is um, fantastic for laying down washes. Um, I really love 
the amount of paint that you can get in a, in a mop brush like this and cover a large area and get a very nice hazy glowy effect that'll just your, your brush strokes will disappear with this but you know get this in some water get it in your your inks or their high flow and man you're covering a lot of ground and getting some beautiful beautiful colors down without having to work in such a small small brush i i almost feel a little bit silly for not realizing how much i love liner brushes <laughs> When I started using a liner brush, I'm like, are you kidding me? That's how I need to get my lines. I love line work. It's very much a part of my art. And using the acrylics this year and then finally discovering these really fine liner brushes is how I want to get my lines. If, you're, if you like lines in your work, you need to get a liner brush. Just try it out. You'll be really surprised as to how the line quality is going to be when you use one of these. I was using a lot of like color pencils for line work, but I realized there's certain situations and more often than not, I'm actually reaching for a liner brush uh, than I am for the colored pencils for line work later on in the painting. Um, you gotta try one of these. So this drawing gum or flasking, flasking fluid? <laughs> so this drawing gum or masking fluid is a game changer for me. I didn't realize how much I love this stuff. I actually have had some that somebody gave to me and I didn't really know how to use it properly. Um, but I recently did a, a painting with uh, where I needed to paint the background and didn't want to disturb the foreground characters. So I masked them out. Is It's just a brush and you can... Um, the, there's another kind I'm ordering that actually has a, um, a dispenser in it so you don't have to use a brush. We brush this down, you can paint right over it, and then you can pull up, pull this up, just kind of scrape it up with your thumb, and suddenly that area is left untouched, and you can begin to paint on it. So I typically use it for foreground elements or foreground characters. It's really, really good. It can damage your brush. You never want to use a good brush when you're putting this stuff down, but man, is it fantastic. Ooh. So this is, this is really, really simple. It's a simple thing, but it's a very, very fine mister and you're going to get um coverage that you wouldn't normally get when you're laying down or trying to uh you know keep your paints wet i spray my palette with this pretty often i might spritz a little bit on the surface i'm about to paint because it's so fine um it's one of those things that you need to have if you're doing acrylic paint because you want to keep your paints from drying out so uh, oh, this is this is kind of silly but i finally got a little small um pencil sharpener this year because i'm always sharpening a pencil i want it you want to have a fine point all the time. I went uh, one day and I saw Leonardo da Vinci's sketchbooks in a museum in London. And I noticed that all of his pencil marks are very, very fine. He's always got a sharp point and so should you. <laughs> and so if you pick up uh, one of these, it can just save time and just quickly boom and boom, your pencil is super sharp every time. It's fairly portable. I do keep it on my desk though. And uh, you can use it um, just with by hand or by, um, by battery. So whichever one you choose. So this Staedtler pencils are fantastic. I didn't realize how much I liked mechanical pencils. I have some tape on there right now. Excuse the tape, but it just makes it a little bigger for my hands for ergonomic reasons. Um, but these Staedtler pencils are just fantastic. You can get the, you know, get a bunch of lead, order that, and you'll be set to go for it. But to get some fi really fine details, sharpening a pencil can just get crazy. And if you always, 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 always have a sharp pencil, then these mechanical pencils is what you need. And I actually recommend this one. Another small but kind of funny thing is to just get one of these water droppers. Um, you can get the smaller ones, but this one seems to work really well for me because I'm trying to get the right amount of water and have control over it. And so obviously you could put ketchup in this, but I've put water for painting. It allows me a lot of control over how much water I'm introducing into my paints on my palette. And so just, just grab one of these. I actually got this one off of Amazon because it came in a pack of a bunch of them. And um, so I will never run out of little squirty bottles. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about mediums. Mediums are something that I've really grown into this year, especially as, I, as I've kind of exploded into acrylics and really started to love acrylics. And so let's talk about these. The first one that I have is the most recent one that I've been using, and that's airbrush medium. And so this airbrush medium is almost the consistency of water. Not, I mean, not quite, but it is so, so fluid. And you add this to acrylics and you can use do amazing washes with them. Um, it also has, it's a little bit of retardant. It doesn't dry as quickly and so you have a little bit more time to work with your, um, 
with your acrylics. One of the things about acrylics is if you water them down too much with water, the way that the polymer works, it can start to actually break it down and it's not gonna adhere, it'll just flake off. And so if you're actually thinning your paints with mediums, um, that's going to be a little more archival and it's just gonna work better. And so I would recommend trying out something like uh, airbrush medium, because you can add this to basically any acrylic and it will thin it down. Oh, Matt Medium, I love you. I do, I love this stuff. This is probably the holy grail of mediums for me this past year. It's super versatile. You saw that I was able to attach paper uh, to a board with it. Um, you can mix it with your acrylics to add more flow, but it doesn't get super glossy. Um, you can use it as a glue. It's, it's a really versatile um, medium. And if you haven't been using matte medium, I recommend that you try it out. I mean, I've as, as I'll go on a painting, I may use water to thin down things a little bit. I may use a little bit of matte medium with the water or just matte medium by itself. Uh, what an awesome, awesome product. Basically what matte medium is, is that it is the, it's, it's the medium uh, without any color into it. So this is basically acrylic paint without any color. Fantastic stuff. GAC 100, you gotta love this stuff. So this is another medium that is fantastic for a couple different reasons. Um, I use it in a way, um, I, basically it comes down to two purposes for me. First off, I'm going to use it to seal the boards that I use. It creates a protective barrier between your paint um, and your panel that you're painting on so that it's gonna be more archival. I've also put this on paper to seal it as well. Specifically for using, oil paints, you want to have a barrier between um, the paint and the surface that you're working on because it can start to kind of eat through and it will eventually become non-archival. So GAC 100, fantastic, this is by Golden. And um, you can also use it to thin your paints as well. Um, but because of its glossy tech, uh, its glossiness, I'm not a huge fan of using it in the painting process because I like to kind of add the amount of gloss that I want to at the end of my painting. But GAC 100, get yourself some. If I'm doing just acrylic paints, I've started to kind of experiment a little bit with a gloss varnish. This is acrylic gloss varnish by Liquidex. And what's great about this one is if I'm not using oils, I can lay this one down um, to provide a little bit of UV protection for the painting. I don't use this exclusively, but it's a really nice way to brighten up the colors, add a gloss, a finish to your painting. Uh, check this one out. All right, so this little bottle of Gamvar varnish is fantastic. I absolutely love this stuff because we always want to, a way to protect our paintings. We want a way to have our paintings, our paintings protected from UV and from dust and other things. What's great about this is that it's completely removable. You could use a thinner to just remove this um, Gamvar and start over. What's also super nice about Gamvar is that you don't have to wait ages for your painting to dry. As long as it's touch dry, you can pretty much use Gamvar and it will create this beautiful, luscious gloss finish that, that just saturates your colors and brings them back to life again. And um, I love using this. Uh, you need to put it on thinly. You don't glob it on. It's kind of almost scrubbed into the surface with a, with a brush. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that one day as well to how, to how to use Gamvar. But I've been kind of going back and forth if I like the satin. Um, but I think actually, uh, this is the satin bottle, but I think I actually prefer the the gloss version of this. Okay, so one of the things about getting into acrylics this year is that acrylics dry out super fast. I just spit crazy. They just dry out super fast and that's kind of an issue. It's one of those things that I wasn't used to, especially with oil paints, is that I'd be working nice and slowly enjoy myself and I reach over and a, a paint is dry almost instantaneously, especially if you use a regular palette. And that is where the Stay Wet palette comes in. Ta-da! I know this thing's humongous, isn't it? There's there's a there's a smaller version of this, but and what it is, it's basically an airtight container. I'm gonna show you what this is in here. Um, it comes with a sponge that you use. It's a sponge that you you get wet, and then under it is this paper. Actually, sorry, it goes under the paper. And this paper is a special paper that they make that um, you can put your paints on. It goes on top of the uh, sponge. And as you sit there, 
your paint won't dry because it has this moisture under it, okay? Mine looks pretty crazy. I probably need a new piece pretty soon here, but it, it still works like this. And what's great about it is that when you're done, you put the cover on it, it seals it, and I can keep paint wet for weeks. Sometimes I'll take it off, mist it a little bit again. It can get a little smelly, so you don't want to leave it in here very long, um, but I can keep paints going for, if I'm working on a bigger project, I use this to keep my paints wet. Well, there you go, my friends. There's the materials that I've used this past year that really changed dramatically the way that I make art. It's allowed me to kind of reach for whatever material that works best for the given task, rather than just trying to make the medium that I'm working in just kind of work. This has basically turned me into a mixed media artist, and I never thought I would be a mixed media artist, but at the end of the day, I believe that the images that we create are more important than how we created them or the materials that we used. So use the materials that are available to us as an advantage and reach for whatever is best for that particular task. You know, this next year, I've got some new materials lined up as well. I'm gonna be thinking about getting into gold leaf. I've got some new spray materials, spray fixatives that I'm gonna try. And I think that it's important that we continue to always look for what is best for making our craft. We all have a way of making art that works best for us. And you, there may be a product, there may be a material, maybe a medium out there that is going to help you get to the next level. And so you just simply have to try it. Experiment. You're going to love what you're, what you're gonna find. There's gonna be something out there for you. So friends, thank you so much for being here. I'm glad that we can just kind of talk about art on a regular basis here. If you have found this content helpful, could you just leave a like? And don't forget to subscribe for new content just like this. You know, as always, remember that you are indeed a valuable person and, and that you're loved. I'll see you next time.